All right, and welcome back. In this video, we are going to be going through Chapter 10, Section 3, titled Concurrent Lines. And the reason that we work on Section 10, 3 and 4, 7 together, or back to back, really, is 4, 7 lays the groundwork of understanding altitudes and medians and perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors, while 10, 3 is going to be putting them all together. And we're going to be getting specific here. By the end of this video, we should be able to state and apply theorems involving concurrent lines. So without further ado, let's have out our guide and notes. Let's begin. So when two or more lines are concurrent, the lines intersect in one point. All the theorems in this lesson involve concurrent lines, and many students forget about the definition of concurrent lines. Again, it's when two or more lines intersect at one point. So the first theorem that we're going to be talking about is that knowing the bisectors of the angles of a triangle intersect in a point that is equidistant from the three sides of the triangle. So if we know that ray AX, BX, and CX, those all bisect angles A, B, and C, then we're going to have segments XR, XS, and XT. Their lengths are all going to be equal. So the bisectors of angles intersect at a point and they're going to be equidistant from the three sides of the triangle. We're going to be talking about the names of these points at the end of this video, and we're going to have a little table and a little summary for you just to help you get everything down. But with that in mind, please work on problems one through three on the guided notes and resume when you're ready to move forward to talk about the perpendicular bisectors. So now the perpendicular bisectors of three sides of a triangle intersect in a point that is equidistant from the three vertices of the triangle. So if we're given that segments XD, XE, and XF, they are the perpendicular bisectors of segments AB, BC, and AC, then we're going to be able to justify and say that the lengths of AX are equal to length of BX, which is equal to lengths of CX. So X is going to be where these perpendicular bisectors meet in our diagram and the distance away from the three vertices this time are going to be equal so with this in mind please work on problems four through six on the guided notes and resume when you're ready to move forward this one's a bit straightforward right now the lines that contain the altitudes of a triangle those intersect in a point and we're going to be talking about again the name and special properties a little bit later in this chapter but well, that's all we need to know at this point in time in order for us to work on problems 7 through 10 on the guided notes. So the medians of a triangle intersect in a point that is two-thirds of the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So the following ratios are going to be true. So if we know as segment AM, BN, and CP are the medians of triangle ABC, they're going to be intersecting at a point X. Then the following statements are going to be true. The length of AX, BX, and CX, those are going to be two-thirds the length of our entire median. We're going to have segments XM, XN, and XP are going to be one-third the length of our median. We're going to know that the ratio of AX to XM is going to be two to one. We're going to know that the ratio of BN to BX to XN is 3 to 2 to 1. We're also going to know that CX is going to be 2 of XP, or half of CX is equal to XP. Let's go through an example below. We're going to refer to triangle ABC and the median shown above. So we're going to be using the same diagram that's listed in this video. And we're given that AX is equal to 8, and we want to find the length of AM. We're also asked, well, if the length of XN is equal to 4, then the length of BX is going to be what? Well, if we know the length of AX is 8, and AM is the entire median, then 8 is going to be 2 thirds of our median. So, as, as we go to solve it, it's going to be AX is equal to 2 thirds AM, again, 2 thirds of our entire median. So 8 is equal to 2 thirds of our median, and we multiply both sides by 3 over 2, and we get 12. For B, if we know that Xn, again, is equal to 4, and we're trying to find Bx, well, Xn is 1 third of our entire median, Bx is 2 thirds of our entire median, so we know that 
we're just going to take xn and multiply by 2. We're going to double that value and we get 8. With this in mind, please work on problems 11 through 16 on the guide and notes and resume when you're ready to move forward and talk. So I have a review table for us here. So within this review table, we're going to be talking about the medians, altitudes, perpendicular bisectors, and angle bisectors and special relationships that happen with them, special names, and what we can justify from it by a picture. So we're going to go from medians and to altitudes, perpendicular bisectors, and angle bisectors. And I highly recommend that we jot this down. So medians, written in blue. Medians are going to be coming from a vertex. They're going to intersect the midpoint of the opposite side. And we call this the centroid. So again, medians are coming from a vertex, hitting the midpoint of an opposite side, and their intersection is going to be called the centroid. Altitudes, again, are going to be coming from the vertex. They're going to form a right angle with the opposite side, and we call their intersections the orthocenter. So again, altitudes, starting from a vertex, they're going to create a right angle with the opposite side, and their intersection is going to be called the orthocenter. Perpendicular bisectors are not going to be starting from a vertex. They're going to be the midpoint and a right angle with each side. And we're going to call those point of intersections the circumcenter. So again, these do not start from the vertex. They're going to start from the midpoint and they're going to make a right angle with each side of those triangles. And their point of intersection will be called the circumcenter. And lastly, you have the angle bisector. That's going to start inside of the vertex. It's going to bisect each angle. And where these three intersect, we're going to call that the in center. So again, an angle bisector is starting inside of the vertex. They're going to bisect each angle. And their point of intersection is going to be called the in center. You will need to know this. So please make sure you have this down. You wrote all this down. And we're going to be prepared to operate with it because these are very crucial for us to succeed in this section. Great job. Keep it up. Keep making yourself proud. Let us know if you have any questions and we'll talk to you soon.